G'day. Welcome to my unpatching video. In this video, I'll be focusing on this system, even though I'm also using a, a 909, and uh, during the performance, I actually used an analog heat just as a, just a little bit glue to glue everything together at the very end. So I won't really be discussing too much of the 909 or the uh, analog heat. The focus will be this little system here. So let's get to it. Now, I first should remind you that I am an improviser, so I don't really save anything whatsoever. So every time I turn on my machines or my modular system, I'm pretty much beginning from scratch, and I'm just seeing what evolves through my interactions with the devices in my studio. Now, it's fair to say that in uh, my modular rig, there's the Steppy and... The Metropolis and the Steppy does have some safe sequences, but <laughs> I'm changing them all the time as well. And also the Metropolis, I don't use any of the save functions, and you'll see how I use this um, rather quickly to improvise with it. Okay, so let's start off with just the uh, audio routing to begin with. I've got the modular rig going straight into my uh, Model 1 mixer here. It's coming in on one channel by itself. Um, then I have the 909 coming in on its own channel. I'm not separating the kick whatsoever, so it's it's literally just um, two channels here, the modular here and the 909. Um, hanging off the Model 1, I've also got a space pedal and an even tied time factor for some delay and some reverb, but I kind of use that sparingly and at the end of the chain for the particular jam I've got the analog heat and as I, I think I mentioned before I'm just using that as just a little bit of glue to glue everything uh, together but I won't be I won't be really I won't be talking much about the analog heat at all in this particular video and I won't be talking much too much about the 909 either okay um, I do have the Octatrack, which is right here. This is my master clock. So um, when it comes to MIDI, I've got the Octatrack just sending MIDI clock to the modular and to the and to the uh, 909. Cool. So now we know the audio and the MIDI settings. So there's no. I'm not using the Octatrack at all to. Um, to sequence any of the modular or the 909. Everything is running its their own sequences. Cool. So, overview of them. Oh, well, <laughs> one important thing. We've also got a DFAB that's hanging just below the, the modular rig, um, and that's been synchronized via the, the Steppy up here as well. But we'll get to it. So let's have a look at the the uh <coughs> my modular rig and some of the modules going all the way around um i've got the metropolis here the intelligent metropolis yes this is an old one and um i love it because i can just perform with it straight away i've also got the schwayman bld2 here underneath this bunch of cables here that's acting as kind of somewhat like a 303 voice because everything I do sounds like a 303. Yes, I know. Um, then I've got the Quadra, the four um, quad envelope generators based on the, the bookler as well. Um, then I've got the Optimix. Now, I'm not really using, the Optimix is a low pass gate. I'm not really using it as a low pass gate at all. I'm kind of using it as um, 
uh, two filters. And to tell you the truth, I actually think that the uh, the strike is kind of shitty on this. It could be just the Vactrols that are in the Optimix. Now, the end of chain for this rig is actually um, the cockpit too here from Endorphins. So it's a four channel mixer that also has a side chain. I'll get to it in a second, just give me a quick overview here. Then we've got Pamela's new workout that's spitting out some gates and some modulation for me. Then I've got the SY05, which is based on the Pearl Syncussion, a single voice. So good, I've got two of them. Um, then we've got the Basimilis Ituritas Alta. Again, one of my favorite modules. I also have two of them. I've, uh, so th this is giving me a um, lots of percussive sounds and anything from bass to lead. It's quite a uh, universal voice. The triad is my attenuator or attenuverter, I should say. And the Lachelic Iterus is also one of my... Actually, the, the Lachelic Iterus is one of my first oscillators I ever bought. And I love it. This is not my... I, I, I bought it, I sold it, then I bought it again. And I've got the also the Paquito, which is my ultimate favourite module, but it's not on show here right now. And I've also got the one of the effects, one of the Versio modules here, but I'm using the, um, this is the Lacrima, but I'm not using Lacrima. I've, I've uh, flashed it with the Reverb 1 Desmosis, I think it is. So I'm using a little bit of Reverb here. And then I've got the Endorphins uh, Queen of Pentacles, kind of 909 module. Uh, you know, can you have enough 909s or 303s? Absolutely not. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth with these modules. It was really just uh, going to give you an overview of, of the kind of sounds I'm getting out of them and how I kind of use it in this rig. Also, should mention the Steppy up here, which is my gate sequencer. There's also the U-MIDI that it's converting the, the uh, MIDI clock from the Octatrack. I've got a... A dual v uh, VCA here, which I don't use. I actually think it's a bit, <laughs> can get a bit noisy. Um, uh, sorry, not noisy, but it tends to um, distort a little bit. I'm not sure. I'm probably using it the wrong way. And then I've got my line out. Uh, so you can see the end of chain, well, the end of the, the voice chain here is going out of the cockpit into the lacrima or the, the reverb, I should say, then out of here into the line out, line out, straight into the mixer again. Cool. Where shall we begin? Well, first of all, let's turn the, the side chain down. Let's make sure the 909 is off and let's just hit start. So, oh, <laughs> that's not running, is it? There we go. So now we are running. So, Normally, uh, I mean, I don't have any uh, traditional musical uh, um, training whatsoever, and I don't, don't even really respect pitch whatsoever. So I go to scale, and I just choose a random one. I think I choose blues because it's I know what the blues is, and it's the basis of rock and roll, and rock and roll is the foundation of, I guess, dance music, isn't it? Cool. Well, I just said it. Um, so let's have a listen to what we're... And I'll just make sure that we're just hearing the BLD and I'll turn it up. Oh. Well, what do you know? Sounds like a 303. So the way in which I use the Metropolis is my Metropolis is my main uh, pitch sequencer. So I'm sending pitch from the Metropolis to the BLD and I'm also sending it to the BIA and the, the LI. But the, the three different voice modules are getting different gates. So the BLD is getting the gate signal or trigger signal from the Metropolis because I can turn up the gate time and kind of have that longer duration, almost that longer decay. And why is that? 
I'm glad you asked me because the trigger has been malted to the decay too. So every time I turn up the gate here, the gate time, that's affecting the amount of decay. Hence, we're getting that that longer duration, that kind of longer duration uh, notes. That's me playing with the actual decay here. Now with the gate time on the Metropolis. So it's almost like, well, it is like the decay on the 303. Not because I don't really care about pure tracking. Hmm, not bad. Here I'm just adding, I've just added some slides. Great thing again with the Metropolis is that I can, <laughs> I can manually or modulate the slide time. Well, I like to play with it myself. And if you do this, Cool. It's stuck in a note. Which one is it? There you go. Because the gate is um, completely open there on the uh, Metropolis. On the on the gate modes, you've got these four four modes. If I it holds that note, doesn't it? Well done. So I want to go back to the BLD. Well, we're still on the BLD. So the BLD is a bass lead and drum generator as um, as well as Schwayman uh, labeled it. Uh, it's great for kicks as well. I like this as a kind of bassy um, 303-esque. Great filters. It's got a, a 36 or a 24 dB slope. Uh, it also has a bandpass filter as well. So I can switch it. And I've got, I've, I can, I can have the because uh, it's got two envelopes. It's got a, a, a tack decay envelope and it has a tack hold decay envelope. Now I can use that to actually the the envelope here to modulate the filter. So here I've got a little bit of the AD affecting the uh, filter. And the amp CV is, I've got it using the attack decay, um, the, the AHD, because I want to use the, the gate time. And I've multiplied the trigger to the, delay, to the decay too. Still with me? Cool. Moving right along, so that is the that is the, the well, it's, it's asset techno, isn't it? So now we have that 909. Now the mode on the Metropolis is really, it's just the default mode, which is, um, it plays all these stages. I can, I can limit the stages. That's how easy it is. Is just dial something up on the fly. So 
So moving right along, let's go to our second voice. Well, I'm going to call it the second voice. Let's go to the BIA. And <coughs> so the BIA is going through the Optimix and the first uh, envelope generator in the Quadra is shaping the Optimix because I'm using pretty much it's just the VCA with the filter. And it sounds like this. So let's mute the BLD for a moment and the 909. But it is getting the pitch from the Metropolis. But the gate is coming from up here in the steppy. Can we see that? Now, I am, <laughs> the whole point of unpatching it was to actually start unpatching. So David, start unpatching, as you said you would tell everyone that you would start unpatching. Let's get rid of these uh, cable ties. Oh look, they're so colorful. So, what have we got modulating the BIA? We have this, ah, uh, it's coming from uh, the trier, and the trier is getting, what's that one? Ah, so we're going all the way over to the um, to the Pam's. Well, it's our previous workout, isn't it? So on three, I'm going to use my hand because I can hardly read it in this light. Please hold. What have we got on three? Ah, uh, we've got some ra uh, some uh, random CV. That's going into the morph. There you go. As I turn up the try, you can. You can hear it modulating the morph. And morph is the different wave shapes. Nice and metallic. I turn down the, the, the decay. And introduce the BLD back in there. Nine oh nine. Now, because the Optimix uh, sums uh, channel one into channel two. I also have the next voice, which is the Lokelic Iteris. Now, this one's interesting because, let's, let's hear it. That's this module here right now. Ooh, that sounds good. Okay, <laughs> where are we, David? Again, this is getting, okay, <laughs> slow down, David. Okay, this has actually two uh, pitch inputs, and depending on the actual algorithm you're using, uh, affects the way they, um, they're associated with one another, or disassociated, I should say. So what I have here, the blue A, in the, the A uh, channel of the pitch on the LI, that's actually coming from the Metropolis. Again, the gates are actually coming from channel C. Let's see what those green are. That's where we're hitting. I'll make a shorter sequence. And now if I change the Metropolis here, just so you know I'm not mine. That's also going through the Optimix, and I've got... Using 
using the filter and the control for the filter is coming from the quadra second channel. Now the thing I love about the LI is that I've also got uh, another channel for pitch. Now this pitch is actually coming from, see if we can see it, oh you can't see it, can you? Um, no, you can not actually down here, it's coming from the Avalon which is another 303. We're not actually hearing the 303 but I've got pitch coming out of the Avalon and that's going into the channel B pitch on the LI. So at the moment we were just listening to uh, pitch A, which was coming from the Metropolis. But now I'm going to switch it to B. If I change the pattern on the 303, or the, the Avalon I should say, down here. You can hear that. Now, I can select, so, so the LO, you can choose which is the master pitch. Now I can put it in the middle. It's almost like they're FMing each other, or well, they, they actually are frequency modulating each other. Now, there's a, there's a little bit of modulation here, because these work really well with some great modulation. So, uh, that's getting modulation and it's being attenuated from the channel A on the track. Now, where is that coming from? That's coming from this purple cable, which is coming from... Ah, that's interesting. No. Ah, uh, it's coming from channel 5 from Pam. So let's go back to... Sorry, I can't read it. There we go. Channel 5 is a sine wave. And that sine wave is running at double the clock speed. Double tempo. Now, I could actually attenuate it in PAMS, but I, I choose to attenuate via the triad. I like, like, I like my hands on my modulation. Let's hear with everything else. The great thing about the, the BIA, again, I've got the switch for bass, alto, and treble, and also the skin liquid metal. So changing the, the, the timbre qualities very quickly. So far, so good. Cool. So we've got the BLD, the BIA. Okay, there's a whole lot of cables going on here, right? So there's there's more going on, right, David? Yes. Okay. So um, we've talked the Quadra. We've talked the the Optimix. What it's doing. Um, before I get to the um, the Queen of Pentacles, because that's that probably needs its own video. Well, actually, all these modules could do with their own video. Um, We'll get to the, the Endorphins, uh, Creative Pentacles, and the SYO5 in a sec. Just let you know what the cockpit is doing. So the cockpit has, channel four is the, I'll, I'll work from the bottom up, sorry. So channel four, the bottom one here, the purple one, that's the BLD. Channel three is the output of the Optimix, which has the BIA and the LI. Uh, channel two has the Queen of Pentacles, and channel one has 
V B L D. See? See the cable? Right, cool. Now, side chain. So what the side chain, side chain is, is really great on this because you have that kind of side chain pumping that we all need in Techno no matter what. Now I actually have an envelope coming from from Pam's that I know off by heart already. So if we just play what we just heard again and I'll turn up the side chain, you'll hear it. No side chain. Good point, and something that you can explain to the people who are watching. So in order to engage a particular channel through the side chain, you actually have to press it down and you can adjust the amount. Now, for some reason I had it muted, that's why we weren't hearing the side chain, but now we are. Off, you can see the you can actually see the strength of the side chain as I turn it up, so just watch the intensity of that blue light. It works well, you know, subtly as well. I um, mean, just for, just so you can hear the actual effect. Moving right along, let's get to the um, the Queen of Pentacles and the SY05. So, the SY05 is actually going into the auxiliary, auxiliary in on the Queen of Pentacles. Now, the Queen of Pentacles has a number of how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven voices. Two are with samples. Um, that I've just thrown some samples in there. I think half of them are the factory presets as well. And I just like that I've got an extra set of more percussioning and you can actually hear that everything is kind of percussive anyway. So let's just hear the Queen of Pentacles for the moment. Now I'm going to mute all the onboard sounds on this voice. And we're, we're first only going to hear the SYA5. You follow me? SYA5 goes into here. And then that's coming out into the mixer. Turn the side chain right down. And the reason I, 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 I send this into here and I submix it is, well, <laughs> I've run out of inputs on my mixer. And I can also use this great um, dual filter. So it goes into high pass, uh, so low pass and then high pass. But at 12 o'clock, it should be um, zeroed and it has actually resonance as well. So there's a lot of features here. I'm only going to go through them very, very quickly. So here is the SY5. And that's been triggered by channel A on the Steppy. No, I'm not sending a pitch. It has a sample and hold, so it actually can generate random pitches. And with this, it's actual filter. And the modes change the different kind of oscillators.
Now remember that's going into here and now I've got use of the filter. Not only that, it actually has an effects, onboard effects as well. Some delay. That's just the SY05. Thanks, by the way. Side chain now. Come on, that's techno. Remember, that's just one. We're, we're talking just this module at the moment. Going through here, I'm not even playing any sounds on the, the Queen of Pentacles yet. I am very excited. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now the trick is that I can't actually really mute this. actually needs that going into here so what I don't need to do is either like try and disguise it which is well you can hear it because we're just focused on that sound I could pull it out and we won't hear it or I could mute it yes but if I want to play the other sounds on the um, Queen of Pentacles we can kind of hide it Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see it under all these cables. You said you were going to unpack, but I'm not really fully unpacking because I want to go back and you know record some of this, by the way. Um, so we've got we've got um, triggers in for most of these sounds, and I can mute or send it to effect. Got resonance on the filter. Well, that dropped in volume. Why is that dropping volume? Hey, eh? why is that dropping volume? Well, I wonder why that's kind of why is that modulated like that? It's interesting. I like it and I don't like it. Could be the effect. Yes, so I just need the effect. Okay. So you got the bass drum, the snare, the clap, and then you got the two samples. It's obviously something I've added. Don't forget, that all, so so where are these rhythms coming from? You, you want to know how I'm triggering it. So I've got some Euclidean rhythms coming from Pamela's. I'm also uh, piggybacking some of the uh, steppy sequences as well, because I've got four channels here. Uh, and yeah, that's rather, it'll take me quite a while to tell you exactly but you can hear you can hear basically the overall thing that's going on. I've also got some CV modulation going in for the the spoiler, which is like a bit crusher that's affecting the the snare drum. The great thing is you send a clock into here, and then you can actually uh, do some some rolls. 
Now, after all this time, you've forgotten about the SY05. It's still there. Ah, see? Bring back the BLD. 999, just for... Side chain. Take my goodness. Okay. Okay. We still haven't finished. We've got down to one more thing, okay? Which is channel one. What is channel one, David? Channel one is the DFAM down here. So very simply, I'm not patching it. Oh, I love the DFAM so much. I've got two of them. So uh, again, all my voices tend to be percussion based, as you can hear, very much so. Um, so I've got... Uh, Steppy out of channel uh, D. It's just sending straight um, eights because it's an eight step. I could I could use sixteen. Doesn't really matter. I could use four, and that's going into the advanced clock here. So that's running the the defam. If I hit play, there you go. Now we're not hearing it yet because I haven't un I haven't unmuted it yet. And then it, the VCA is going straight out back into channel one. And if we unmute it, that's just the defam. Now let's go back to that side chain. So, there is one more thing up my sleeve. We've got the, the reverb unit, or the, the Versio. Now, the, <laughs> I should have got the, the reverb one. I mean, this is still good. This is the, uh, the auto wah, but um, I'm using this as the, um, as the reverb. So, let's just go with the DFAM for now. And the 909, let's, uh, let's turn down the 909 a bit. Just make it, just maybe just a kick drum. Cool. And if you notice on the, oh, if you don't, if you have a DFAM, you'll notice that it doesn't reset. Now, some people may find that annoying. I love it. Because then every time I stop and start, it's starting from a, a new place. Great for an improviser. Cool. 
kick drum and D fat. Now, I've got the actual uh, dry wet all the way down. Now, I turn this up. something else to it. Everything's going through it. And they, that's how I use an effects unit in my module I'm attenuating some modulation that's going to... Oh, I don't know anymore! I've also got... I've also got the envelope, the third envelope that's been triggered by... Uh, it's getting a, a random trigger from cams and that is also modulate that's also oh and that's that's the envelope that's actually modulating the reverb at that got any more questions for me please maybe i need to do uh, longer videos on each of these modules i've only really <laughs> somewhat scratched the surface and i think we've been going for quite some time so um yeah so there you go there's my first unpatching video i hope it was some value to you and please feel free to comment below and ask me more questions hey perhaps even follow me on patreon and get some personalized feedback too. Check out the tiers on Patreon. Anyway, thanks for having me and I'll see you around next time. See ya.